Thank you, Madam Chair, and let me thank both of our witnesses. Uh, I'm going to follow up on Senator Johnson's uh, questioning because, uh, Mr. Escobar, I think you're giving a much more rosy scenario as to the likelihood of progress. It's been since 1995. We've been following the same path in regards uh, to the Dayton Accord, and the Dayton Accord was only supposed to be a transitional type of an arrangement. It wasn't supposed to be the final word in regards to the constitutional authority uh, for uh, Bosnia. So, and now you're mentioning that we've had systemic corruption there that is uh, blocking uh, integration into Europe. So uh, the problems seem to be getting worse rather than better. So to my question to you, you say you have a game plan in regards to China, you have a game plan in regards to Russia. Uh, I assume you have a game plan in regards to constitutional reform. Uh, you've imposed sanctions against Mr. Dodik, and I agree with Chair Shaheen that that's the, the, the right thing to do. Um, so how do we intend to engage uh, um, the parties to really move forward to the type of constitutional change, the kind of type of uh, dealing with corruption? Uh, it seems to me, uh, how do you deal with the malign influence of Russia and China? And how do you engage Serbia more in regards to bringing about uh, a more permanent uh, reform in Bosnia that could lead to integration into Europe? Well, thank you for that question. Um, before I talk about Bosnia and Herzegovina, I have to tell you a little bit about the context in which uh, Bosnia, in the neighborhood in which Bosnia and Herzegovina lives. The story of the Western Balkans is overwhelmingly a positive story. Of the seven countries of the ex-Yugoslavia, two are members of the European Union and four are members of NATO. The, uh, no, the, I, let me just stop you for a second because I agree with you on that. I, I agree so, with you. There's been a positive. So what, how are we engaging the other partners that have made a lot more progress in that region? To, whereas Bosnia, if you would have gone back a, a decade ago, I think we would have thought Bosnia would be one of the first countries to emerge. It's now lagging behind. It's, uh, I would say it is true that Bosnia is the most concerning country in the Western Balkans. So it does not share in the prosperity of the, others, of the other five. Uh, it is not on a solid uh, uh, integration track. Uh, and the corruption is the worst anywhere else. And by the way, that corruption uh, is causing a brain drain and a net emigration that is 10 times that of Serbia. So it is at the top of our priorities. Now, it is true also that uh, there is nothing inherent about Dayton that prevents uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina from, uh, from moving forward as a democratic uh, and prosperous state. So it really is a lot about the entrenched corruption, uh, which we hope through engagement, through uh, development, uh, through capacity building, and through sanctions that we can address. Now, it no, is true that we can stop you that. I, agree, I agree with you on the corruption issue. You're absolutely correct, and I hope we can do everything we possibly can. Uh, I remember the briefings we got during the Dayton Accord, uh, and it was very clear that it was aimed at resolving the conflict that was occurring, the violence that was occurring in Bosnia. But it was never meant to be the final word in regards to governance, that they knew that additional constitutional reform was going to be needed. It dealt with the practical problems of the ethnic communities, not so much as a final a way of resolving the governance of Bosnia. It seems to me you're saying you think that could be the final solution? I don't think so. I think the final solution is European Union membership. And uh, that's why we need to encourage our European uh, colleagues to show a clear path uh, to, uh, to Europe for Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we have seen, uh, uh, alongside uh, with this administration, you've seen a new UK special representative, a more engaged European Union uh, external action service, and, uh, and an, a more invigorated uh, bilateral relationship between a lot of the countries in Bosnia and Herzegovina, because um, the, uh, the crisis that's emerged with Milorad Dodik has bought into re stark relief the problems of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I agree with you that um, under uh, that Dayton was compromises laid upon compromises as a way of stopping the war. But in that regard, it was very successful. There hasn't been any conflict in Bosnia in almost three decades, and there won't be. 
so we need to work closer with our European partners to give them a vision of what they need to do and how they need to function as a government to be able to be a successful member of the European Union. Just, Just one, one last, last question. question. Wouldn't, Wouldn't that, that also include constitutional reform? It does. Now, we're starting with limited constitutional reform as a way of creating uh, opportunities on the ground for greater interethnic reconciliation and greater institutional functionality. Uh, and I do think that at least the core of that plan will be successful. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator.